Thank you so much, all of you, for coming here and uh, for demonstrating that India is in good hands, good hands and strong hands. I'm using strong because Sardar Patel is in fashion these days. And Sardar Patel, once when issues like this were being discussed, he said, the world only listens to the strong. So we should uh, don't criticize the government too much because it might become strong. So OK. Uh, there was a well-known politician uh, based in Karachi called uh, Mr. Fatiyab Ali Khan, known for a time as a very close aide to Bhutto, uh, Zulfikar, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. And his wife was from the Pakistani counterpart of IAS. So she was heading a think tank at that time. So once I had gone uh, to the house, and she said, look, I'm just rushing back from Mahore, uh, where I met a lot of uh, your Indian friends. And we were talking about India, Pakistan, peace, and so on. So I said, oh, that's wonderful. I'm sure, since it was Lahore, uh, we would be able to get the peace very soon, something to that effect. So she said, uh, look, Mr. Dobra, uh, you know when peace will come to India and Pakistan? So I thought she had something magical to say. So I said, when? Exactly. So she said, you know, these people whom I met from Pakistan and India side, they kept saying, Lahore Kimitri, Lahore Kimitri, Lahore Kimitri. Peace will come when they all go into Mati and when a new generation takes over. Because they will not have prejudices of the past and they will start afresh with a new mindset. And perhaps that will be the salvation for India Pakistan. Now I couldn't uh, differ uh, with her logic. In any case, I'm trained not to differ with any logic, uh, especially when it is to its constructive purposes. But since the year of the subject of youth, there was another young man I met in Karachi a couple of days later. And this was at the home of a Pathan. So the gathering was all Pathan, and there was a lot of bonhom, a lot of whiskey. And suddenly the host sort of brings a young man, quite <coughs> older than the people. And he said, Uncle, to pass back home. So we started chatting, and I said, what do you do? So he said, sir, I just passed out today from the Naval Academy. Well, congratulate you. Then again, he said the same thing. Sir, when will we become friends? So I said, very soon. So when I said, very soon, hopefully, he said, then what will happen to my work? Now uh, he said that and he realized that he had done something of a gloom because he shouldn't have said that. So anyway, uh, we changed the topic and he slipped away. But later on, I decided to find out what was that oath about. Now this is a oath which every cadet passing out of Pakistan's military academies, army, navy, and air force take that we shall take revenge for what happened in 1971. So you have two different views. One is of the lady who is an experienced administrator who is trying to humor me by saying that you know, peace will come, but let our generation sort of go away and the new generation will bring in something good. The second was this young boy who had been indoctrinated into a way of thinking. And there was a third way. Mohin Qureshi at that time was the Prime Minister of Pakistan. At that time, our cricket team was doing so horribly that every match we would be sure to lose. So uh, one of the dinners that I had to go to was uh, the chief guest was Mohin Qureshi, and the host told me he's going to come. And that was the day when this one-day match, I think, was going to be played 
and was going to get home by the eight o'clock. So I decided that I'll go there a little later, even after the prime minister has arrived, because they would naturally be celebrating as soon as the match got over. They would be celebrating the Pakistani victory. 